difference, plus or minus the margin of error, same formula we've gone over in the past. The margin of error is the z-score now, not the t-score. Remember, we usually use z-scores for proportions, t-scores for means. Yes, I know, some of you out there will say, well, you could use a z-score for, for a mean as long as your data set's really, really, really big. And I'm like, yeah, that's true, but I'd rather go with t-scores that, that are accurate even if the data set's not as, quite as big. So I usually use t-scores for means and z-scores for proportions. All right, so our famous z-score, we've learned these before, right? We're doing a 90% confidence level, by the way. Um, this first one, by the way, was 95% confidence. That's always important information as well. So 1.645 is going to be our z-score for a 90% confidence level and two-tail. Um, two so we're doing, we're doing a two-tail confidence interval. All right. So we're going to do the difference between the sample proportions, right? Remember, these are the, the, the decimal equivalent of a percentage. So P1 hat, so 0.738 was P1 hat. That was the sample percentage of students that did not have a tattoo, 73.8%. Sample percentage of uh, stat students that did have a tattoo was 0.262 or 26.2%. And basically, all I'm doing is plugging this all in. Again, this for part of the formula right here, this big square root thing, that actually is the standard error. So this, is, this big thing is just the, the standard error for the two populations, uh, or for the two samples combined. Again, we're going to figure that out and multiply it by the, the, the critical value. Here's the standard error, 0.0345. Now, I am rounding quite a bit, guys. When I calculate things by hand, and you, when you calculate things by hand, you'll never be as accurate as computer programs. Computer programs keep a lot of decimal places. I'm just kind of rounding stuff, though I, th I think I'm pretty close to what the computer is going to come out with. Um, yeah, I did, I did check it, and uh, it looks like pretty close to what, what the computer got. So, uh, this was our margin of error. Here's our margin of error. Remember, the margin of error is how far off do we think the sample is from the population. But this is two populations, so it's how far is the sample could be from the population difference. How far could the sample difference be from the population difference? That's what this number 0 0.057 is, so about 5.7% margin of error. So here's our margin of error. Okay. Okay, the, here's the key, right? All of this the computer does in a split second. But what we need is this, right? The confidence interval that, that uh, what is this telling us? Well, we learned last time that when a two population confidence interval is positive, positive, right? Notice both of these are positive. By the way, you don't have to write these little positive signs. The computer won't. But I do because two population confidence intervals, it's all about the signs. Negative, negative, positive, positive, negative, positive, right? We learned that from the last video. So, um, so positive, positive, if you remember, tells us that population one is actually higher than population two, and it's between these two numbers higher. So we are 90% confident that the percentage of COC stat students that do not have a tattoo is between 41.9% and 53.5% higher, right, higher, let's write that, higher, so this is telling me higher, right, because it's positive, positive. This one over here, no significant difference, right, it was negative, positive. So this is between these two numbers higher, that's what we think. Okay, let's look at the next one here. So this is our uh, two population mean. Now I'm doing a matched pair. Now we now matched pair is really kind of tricky. A lot of students have trouble with it. Um, basically the idea is, remember, it's sort of like the same people measured twice. So I took a random sample of 80 adults uh, and I basically looked at their diastolic and systolic blood pressure. Remember when you take your blood pressure, by the way, very important, take your blood pressure. Okay, high blood pressure, very dangerous. Okay, so you get two numbers. A systolic blood pressure is the high number and the diastolic is usually the low number. So you can set it up really either way. I could have made systolic population one and diastolic population two or the other way around. I went ahead and made diastolic blood pressure population one and systolic blood pressure population two. Now really this gets a little different in the calculation. A matched pair works a lot like a one population confidence interval. 
So what we do is we subtract the ordered pair. So each person in my random sample of 80 adults, I got their diastolic and their systolic, and I subtracted them. That's called the difference. So what you're doing is you're actually subtracting the diastolic minus the systolic, and you're getting this difference column. And in a way, what we do in matched pairs, we just make a one population confidence interval of the differences. So you can see the sample data doesn't have two means or two standard deviations or two sample sizes. It's only one. So this is the D bar. This is called the mean of the differences. It was negative 44.525. Standard deviation of the differences. This little D next to the S means the standard deviation of the difference column. And then, of course, there was 80 people in the data set. We just measured them twice. So that's one of the key thing you want to think about when you're doing match pair. So again, our formula, now since I have only one sample size, again, my degrees of freedom is just going to be n minus 1, so 79. I looked up the t-score, 2.639. And then I just sort of plugged in these numbers. Now, if you look at the formula, d bar plus or minus t times sd over square root of n, that's the same formula that we learned last time with with one population confidence interval. That looks like a one population mean confidence interval, right? Except it would say X bar here and S right here. So really it's working like a one population confidence interval of the differences. So we worked this out. Here's our uh, standard error. Uh, came out to 1.127. Now the units for um, units for um, uh, blood pressure are millimeters of mercury usually, so this was all in millimeters of mercury. That's what mm of Hg. My, my, uh, again, my margin of error is right here, 2.974 millimeters of mercury. That's my margin of error. Okay. And we got our confidence interval. Now we got negative, 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 right? Very important, the sign. Okay, so we learned uh, last time that negative, negative, two population confidence interval means that population one is smaller, right? Smaller than the population two. And it's between these two numbers smaller, right? So basically, uh, sometimes you'll see people say um, the, the mean, the population mean of the differences is between negative 47.499 and negative 41.551. Again, that's a correct sentence, but it doesn't really, it's kind of, kind of getting kind of confusing for people. So really what this is telling you is that population one is between 47.499 millimeters of mercury and 41.551 millimeters of mercury lower than population two. That's kind of how you want to think about it. Even though the calculations about differences, it's still kind of trying to get out this, the, showing that diastolic blood pressure is lower than systolic, and it's somewhere between 41 and 47.4, um, 47.5 uh, millimeters of mercury lower. All right. So again. Um, uh, don't calculate these by hand. We're going we're gonna to do these with the computer, but uh, I just want to show you a bunch of math today and show you kind of how the, what the computer's doing. You always got to have an idea of what the computer's doing. All right, so that's our lesson for today. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time.